is Portsmouth. It is our home. We live here alongside people of all faiths and races. We love where we live, but we are worried it has become known as a cradle for extremism. Why Portsmouth? On the face of it, this busy maritime city doesn't exactly look like a hotbed of radicalism. We've had our problems of extreme right-wingers, and very recently, young people from here have gone to Syria. The four people that have died out there are still having a ripple effect that many fear is still growing. I honestly think that they don't realise what they're getting themselves in, into and um, you know the, the, the huge sadness for people in Portsmouth is that we did have some young people who travelled from Portsmouth um, to go over to Syria and now four of them are dead. number of people, children I call them because they're very young, um, went to another country for whatever reason and uh, this is obviously unacceptable. In Portsmouth there's the indication that it was a surprise um, that uh, the, um, the young people had gone to Syria. I only knew when thing had happened and when it was out in the open. I think maybe if we were to know those young people a lot better, to know what they were being exposed to, we might have been able to pick up on the signs at an earlier stage. Young people are the ones who seem most likely to become radicalised. And we are young, so we have been to find out what's going on and what, if anything, can be done. Extremism is a form of terrorism. Well, my interpretation of extremism would probably be like from all the things that have happened, like the bombings in London, um, the stabbing that happened not that long ago to the soldier and things like that, but I don't know enough background on like what extremism is. I don't really know about I haven't got an idea about this. A radical view without logic, something that inherently connotes hatred. But people who take their religion um, to the extreme. Um, so like extreme action, like extreme a attacks on like, to, to like, uh, because of your beliefs on specific people or places. An extremist is in you. You want to feel that you are the good community member or you are a good in, a, in your own way. So that could be viewed from my point of view. He thinks differently than I am. And I think you have, you have to see the uh, between how he thinks and how I think. You only have to look at the comments on social media to see just how clueless some young people are. Are they all extremists? I'd probably go with number nine. I'd probably go with one and six, maybe seven. One and three or something. I suppose that the schoolgirl with the tie is meant to be the non-extremist. I recognise him from somewhere, whether it's extremism or not, I don't know. I would go for this guy. The number three. I recognise number three, yes, the London nail bomber. Number four looks a bit suspicious. And number three. I really say, from watching a lot of media, um, just generally going by that, he kind of has uh, the look of it. He looks, uh, that's probably like a mugshot of some sort. But he just, yeah, I'm just judging it by things I've watched before and trying to identify with that, so I'd probably say number nine. Because they, they, they look like a mugshot, you know, it looks like if you've done something bad, you get a mugshot, and it, they, that's the way it looks, you know. The others look like kind of just, fat, you know, regular photos. Um, I don't know, I, I, I genuinely don't know. Looking at them just as like, from like, following certain things, maybe in the news, it's been a lot of people of a certain religion which i know that sounds really stereotypical but um only because like they look <laughs> it sounds really bad no, but they, no, no, yeah no. but um i don't know it just 
from, I don't know, just what I can tell. Because he's wearing like a white bodysuit in it and that's dodgy. Yeah. It seems that across the globe, many young people are unaware of what's going on around them, even though it may be taking place in their own hometown, among their own friends or family. When they start to notice, it may be a little too late. There was no way you could have identified those people who left this country to go and fight somewhere else. If their behaviour changes in some way, then it can start to um, all add up. And I think it's at that point that you need to start to ask the questions around what is going on in their heads, what they're exposed to, you know, what kind of friends they have. So I think all of it is about actually knowing people and knowing how their behaviour changes. And if only it were that simple that there was a special recipe, I think um, we probably would have been able to stop um, a lot of people holding those views or getting to that point of, of being radicalised. You cannot identify who is a good man, who is a good Muslim or who is a bad Muslim. There is no way you can tell anybody. ISIS, you've got um, Al-Qaeda. Well, ISIS is probably the biggest one that jumps to mind at the moment. They're the, they're the, well, they're the top two that I know about, really. I, I can't actually, I'm not sure, I don't think I know any. Um. ISIS, uh, Taliban. And then there's like people like the Westboro Baptist Church and stuff like that. Here. They're ones that you wouldn't really think of. That's the, this is that I know all about. We want to make sure they do know what's going on and start to tell others. Extremism. Radicalisation. Call it what you like, it is affecting us all. We want to let people know that it does matter to everyone. No matter what age, and we need to do something about this. The impact is huge, and that affects friends and family as well. Every time we go out, we think, oh, could this be the person? Because he looked different than anybody else. Is he thinking of something different? There is no way you can tell. It's not just about the families, it is also about communities um, and about the UK as well. And actually, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent myself, I've got two girls, and I can only imagine how the parents must feel um, when they know that their young people have gone um, to Syria and um, hold any other extremist views. I, I would be devastated if those were, were my children. Some of us don't even notice the headlines anymore. Perhaps we think they aren't important. We are here to tell people that extremism is everywhere. In your city, town and country. And there are people out there looking for more potential recruits to their cause. I think people join extremist groups so they can feel a part of something. I guess out of desperation, I think that extremism is in some ways a cry for help and a response to the feeling that they're not being understood. Because, you know, certain people have different beliefs and when they follow other people who have these beliefs, you know, they'll, they'll just follow with what they all believe in. And I think sometimes it has to do with, like, their religion and stuff and how they feel about certain things and sometimes it can be that they feel pressured into it or maybe they have, like, friends and stuff that are getting into it so they just, you know, they f get into it because of that. Um, I'm not 100% well, well, I have got like a friendly answer for it, but I would think that they've been maybe turned against their, their, like, for their culture they turn and then they fight against us, I don't know, I'm not sure, sorry. Um, I, I don't know, I don't always think it's their choice perhaps, maybe they're forced into it. Because I think they are brainwashed. These people, they are being like, their brain being washed, like people, they're going to them, talk to them in a sh like they give some shit idea to them, that's why they, they kind of get into it. Sometimes because of their beliefs or sometimes because they're, it's part of their uh, religion or because they believe it's their duty to finish like um, someone else's work and whatnot. Uh, because they feel left out in a particular community they're in, um, because they feel isolated. So they see something appealing, perhaps, and decide that that is a better opportunity for them to move into. There's an awful lot of information that is just streamed through the internet. Sometimes you don't really know what the original source of that information has been. 
and it is just streamed through at quite an alarming rate. So you could actually get an awful lot of information with that within a short period of time. Um, and the problem there is that uh, quite often you could, I think, be influenced by a large amount of information without even realising it. You know, this is not, we are not in a uh, confined area. It's a wide world. We see what is happening to another country, uh, to wherever is uh, war zones. You see it from the internet, from the news. Why are they thinking this way? Why are they killing each other? Couldn't there be a better way to deal with this matter? Everyone on there is uh, either convicted, wanted, or has died committing extremist acts. Um, right. Right. If I told you they're all extremists, every one of those pictures, they're all Really? Extremists. They just don't look like they're trouble. I mean, number 10 looks looks a bit creepy, so I can see that, but number two and number four, they just look like regular guys, to be honest with you. Yeah. She was connected with the 7-7 seven, seven bombings, yeah. wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't surprise me that much because, yeah, anyone could be Any extreme. Shut up. They're all extremists. What, she's an extremist? Yeah, she's actually one of the most wonderful people <sighs> in the world in extremism and terrorism charges. They've all either convicted, died, or wanted. Yeah. 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 That's so bad. I would never have known that. Yes, I am surprised yeah. at that. <clears throat> no, I think. You know, every single person has the capacity to hold extremist views despite sort of how they look or their gender or their race. Picture this, one of your friends, your family, or one of your loved ones are starting to show extremist tendencies. You get 30 seconds to sit them down and talk to them about what they're about to do. What would you say? I don't know, that's quite a deep issue, isn't it? Um... I'd ask them why, why they think it's appealing. Um, if in relation to religion, I'd ask what part of their religion they're talking about. Um, most religions are about peace and love and cooperation, so I'd have to question that. I think I would probably slap them and like shake them and be like, "What the hell are you doing? Are, are you are you a fool?" So I'll probably I'll probably do that. Yeah. I'll try and chat to them as a friend, say, "Look, why do you think this is right? Why, why are you doing this?" And obviously try and encourage them not to. And if it was a case of then having a lot of evidence and then reporting them to the local authorities, then I would, because not only is it going to, in the long run, they won't, probably won't understand at the time, but it will obviously keep them safe. If it's a secular extremism, um, I'd have to ask them what, what's, what's led them to this path, and, and yeah, and, and basically the big question, why? Don't do it, it's not worth it. But then, I don't know, yeah, that would be my answer probably. <laughs> I'd probably say, um, do you really think it's worth um, hurting people and doing all this stuff just to get your opinion across and let other people know your beliefs? Really don't do it. It's, it doesn't sound like a good idea. Please don't do it. Well, I would say, why are you doing this for? What's the reason? Stop it, that's it. There's no reason behind that. Remember, the problem of extremism is a wide-ranging one. It's not just about one group, one set of views or one religion. But we can turn the tide. If we work together. In insight, insight in mind. In mind.